you do not need a cheat day. Okay, before we dive in, this is a warning. This is gonna be a bit of a rant, okay? But I'm gonna explain why you don't need a cheat day and the approach that I take and my clients take to eating the foods that we may consider as the kind of foods you would eat on a cheat day, okay? Hey, I'm Alex Hall. Thanks so much for stopping by. Do be sure to like the video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. You do not need a cheat day, okay? I'll be honest, this one riles me up a bit. It gets me pretty mad. So let me share a definition of a cheat day from the BBC website. A cheat day is a scheduled break in one's diet. It's based on the idea that you can eat well for six days and then have a cheat day on the seventh to allow you to maintain consistency. Sounds kind of great, right? You can eat whatever you want one day of the week, provided you eat well for six days. So if you're good, then you can go totally bad and be completely bonkers on one day of the week, right? So do you see that this kind of phrasing that, that we're using here, we're using good, and we're using bad, and we're using like, I can go crazy, I can eat whatever I want, you know, total lack of control, anything I need, anything I want, I can have. Okay, we're creating some real polarization during our week and in our food take, and most importantly, in our mentality towards our food intake. Just to share some of my personal experience with cheat days and some of the people who you know I've, I've seen or worked with in the past with their cheat day experience, okay? It's very, very common that you can eat three to four days worth of food, in terms of calories, on your cheat day. Okay, by that I mean three to four times the amount of food or calories that you would consume on one of your, in inverted commas, good days, you would have on your bad day, okay? So we've got seven days of eating, we've got six days of good, where we're consuming the amount of calories we probably need to lose fat, I should say. And then on one day of the week, we're consuming three or four days worth of food. So over a seven day period, we're consuming six days worth of food plus let's say four days worth of food. So we're consuming 10 days worth of food in a week, right? So actually this tool that is meant to allow us to consistently lose weight because it keeps us on track, you know, keeps us motivated to eat good food, can actually end up making us consume far more than we would if we'd have just had a stable intake throughout the entire week. And the kind of foods that people eat on these cheat days, it's all pizzas and fried foods and donuts, highly processed, very low nutrition. The kind of snacking, craveable, highly palatable foods that the food in industry want you to eat that really, I've got to be honest, are making us sick and is making us fat. But then we're doing that for about 30% of the time, okay? So, okay, it's one day out of seven, however, if we're consuming three to four times the amount of food that we normally would, let's say out of 10, because we've got six now plus four, six days worth of food, and then four days worth of food, so we have 10 days worth of food, we're having 40% of our food, highly processed, palatable, simple carbs, just low nutrient quality, that's just causing havoc within our body. And worst of all is this mentality, this mindset we have to our food, okay? We think, oh, if I can just get through these next few days, on my good days, when I'm being good, when I'm behaving myself, I'm kind of punishing myself, oh, if I can just get through these next few days, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday's our cheat day. Friday night, I'm raring to go, I'm so excited. Saturday comes, I hammer all the food, I feel disgusting, you know, I feel like a slob, I can barely move. Sunday, I just, I'm a regretful pile of human, right? Because I just literally feel so bad for everything I've eaten. But we spend the entire week waiting for this brief moment of apparent happiness, when, which really turns into regret. Is that really the way that you want to live your life? Constantly waiting for one day of the week to do something temporarily good, but then that you feel terrible after. Is that really the way you want to live your life? Because if it is, fine. 
but for me personally and a lot of people I know that's just not the way they want to go and then to reiterate there's the whole argument of good and bad okay this labeling of foods oh these are the foods I can eat on my good days these are the cheat day foods that I'm allowed to eat right oh but I can't have those on my good days so we're creating this divide this labeling this polarization between these good and these bad foods what do you think that does for your mental health what do you think that does to your relationship with food if you're out and about on a Wednesday night for example you're seeing friends maybe they want to have a drink maybe they want to go get some some food late at night oh but I can't because it's not Saturday Saturday is my cheat day I'm gonna have to be good you force yourself through these situations wouldn't it be so much easier if you had the flexibility to enjoy social occasions, have a drink every now and then, have some less healthy food every now and then, right? But not just binge it entirely on one day. So look, that's probably enough ranting from me about cheat days. You get it? I don't like them. And I hope you appreciate all of my arguments towards that. But I want to share what I do instead of having cheat days, okay? And this is the thing that I teach my clients. And to be honest, for most of you, if not all of you, it's what I recommend as well. And that is, I eat these less healthy, you know, pizza, crisps, chips, wine, beer, whatever. I eat them when I want them, okay? Obviously in moderation, but I eat them in a way that allows me to appreciate them and enjoy them in the moderate amounts, okay? For example, if I'm going to have a few slices of pizza, I'll sit down, you know, with friends in a setting that I can really enjoy, distraction-free ideally, you know, you really want to enjoy that food, because often when we're eating pizza or something, we'll do it totally distracted, let's say we're watching a film, we've got popcorn, we've got soda, and we've got all the food that we could ever want, and we just wolf it down without even realising it because we're so engrossed by the TV or the film, for example, okay? Whereas if you took that and ate at a table, you'd probably end up eating half the amount because you're so focused on appreciating and enjoying that food. You probably would be able to just go, you know what, I'm done, I'm fine, I'm satisfied, I'm not overly stuffed, I'm not disgustingly stuffed because I'm not distracted, okay? So I can enjoy it in a setting, in a social environment, or just distraction-free and really appreciate it because I know and I know that you know, <laughs> I know that you know that eating too many of these foods makes us feel like rubbish, okay? Just makes us feel like utter garbage, okay? And if you don't feel like that, then you haven't felt how good it feels to eat how well and eat healthy food, okay? But for most of us who have eaten, you know, pretty well for some period of time, we know how bad let's say a pizza binge or a crisp binge or whatever it is, can make us feel, okay? And therefore I'm not driven, I'm not motivated to eat lots of it. I have a bit of it so I can enjoy it, then that'll do, I'll move, I'll move on, I'll go back to my normal routine, okay? I'm not restricting myself, I'm just making that informed decision basically from my own experience because I'm aware of how that makes me feel and that it's not in line with my goals and I just move on and carry on with my life. So never restricting enough. Friends invite me out on a Wednesday, they want to go for drinks and a burger, great, let's do it. I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy it on a social occasion, I'm going to enjoy it in an environment where I can appreciate that and then very quickly I'm going to get settled into my normal routine, okay? No restriction, no waiting until Saturday just enjoying my life. And it works, I should say, it works for my clients, it works for me. I'm in the best state of internal health, I'm at my leanest ever. I've, I'm not restricting anything, it works. If you don't believe me, shoot me a message, let's have a chat. If you want some help, let me know. I'm more than happy to help out. Check out the links in the description and thank you so much for watching. Do let me know as well, do you have cheat days? What's your experience with them? Do you find them a positive thing? Have you had an negative experience with them? Are you using them currently? Let me know below, we'd love to uh, have a little conversation with you. Thank you so much. Do be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you, you soon.